So, tonight's topic is very difficult. It, it literally took me a few days. I've, I, I've known about this situation with Xander's mom now for a while. But it took me some time to put together my thoughts and try to determine the best way to even speak upon it. Because it really is heartbreaking. Everybody, Xander's mother, Kara has been arrested again, not only on the probation violations that I knew she had, she knew she had, even though she put up a front to many, stating she did not. And then, of course, the new charges as well. This is the painfulness of the Idaho 4, because it's real life. On top of a tragedy. M.A.R. Hayes. I'm an ex-con. And unfortunately. I understand not only what she's going through. Right now. In regards to the system. Meaning. The violations and the new charges. And the arrests. But I also kind of get. The sadness of the fact that she's a mother. Grieving the loss of one of her daughters. And life just at this point has spun out of control. But she can't get everything together to, one, know how to actually mourn the loss of her daughter. But, two, to overcome the issues that she's having. Addiction is a beast. Gambling is an additional beast. And you're going to lie, you're going to cheat, and you're going to steal to be able to keep up the habits. It doesn't matter how many people out there that you hurt while doing it. It does not matter because you have to be able to get that fix. You have to. It's real life, ladies and gentlemen, and it's sad. And, that, you know, the, the hardest thing about this for me is I don't want to be that one that comes out and says, hey, if you look back in October, I said, none of that matters. None of that matters. What matters is you had a couple of content creators come together that tried to do good and truly help this woman. I get it now. Looking from afar and speaking in private, I realize all they were trying to do, and they wanted to help, and they wanted to do as much as they possibly could. That's amazing. That's an amazing thing, and I got the utmost respect for that want and that, that feeling to do that. Nobody asked them to do that. They chose to do that on their own, and that's amazing. On top of that, you had heartfelt love and warmth coming from so many that wanted the very same. All they wanted to do was help. They wanted to help a woman in pain. They wanted to help a woman overcome the negativity that you've seen. Many people have done the very same for me. They've supported me. They've loved me. And God, what an amazing feeling that is. What an amazing thing to see. Even my eyes watching from afar, seeing everybody willing to help. That's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. But speaking from experience, because I know what I put my own family through. I know what I put my loved ones through. I know... The pain that I've caused through my actions and my background. And all those that wanted to help me in my past before I officially made that decision that I was going to actually change. And I was going to go through the proper steps. And I'm going to give you some ideas of how I feel her next proper steps to better herself moving forward could possibly be. And it's very, very important. She wasn't at the point that the type of help that was being 
offered to her was going to legitimately help her in the way she needed. That's where I got hung up back then, and that was my cry out when a lot of people actually came down on me because they said, but you were willing to help financially just the same as everybody else. And I guess I can understand the view of that, but I, I wanted to help financially in a different way. I don't think we need to rehash all of that, but now what we have is we have a woman that is no better today, health-wise, mental-wise, emotional-wise, as she was then or even prior to that. She's actually gone backwards because now there are new charges. There are new charges. She's not guilty of them as of yet, but here's where her problem is. She has violated her probation. She does have a probation violation. She cannot get out of jail until that probation violation is handled in some way. Whether they reinstate her probation, whether they sentence her to a certain sentence within the jail, or... Whether they just completely revoke that probation and give her prison time. And from what I understand, the initial charges with the narcotic and drug charges are not minor charges. They're felonies. And they carry the weight of prison time. Do I want to see that? No, that's not what I'm saying. But is that what could be possibly in her future? Absolutely. But now we also have new charges, and I'm not going to break down each individual charge that she has. I don't think that's appropriate. I really don't. If you guys want to look that up, if you feel as though it's necessary that you find out the new charges she has, you're more than welcome to do it. It's public information through the jail in Washington State that she's being housed at. Now, you can do your due diligence, and you can find out the information that really truly would fulfill your need of knowledge but i'm not going to lay that out i'm not going to lay it out but there are new charges and that matters especially when you're going in for a probation violation because unfortunately ladies and gentlemen the probation violation stems back to even prior to all the drama with her in regards to the social media interviews and all of that stuff, it, it, it's before that. She admitted to still be using heavy narcotics, heavy narcotics, and she had other issues going on, including wards for her arrest. I took a beating back then for saying what I knew to be true, but I kept my mouth shut after that because, because I knew it was going to come to what we're at now. And my family back in the day, when I couldn't get out of the cycle of dumb decisions I was making, had a very good stance. We love you, but we're not going to support this version of you, and we're not going to help you financially or to continue doing what you're doing. If you want to make some big changes in your life, then we'll focus on helping those. And that's what my focus is now when it comes to care, because I am not off of the bandwagon that... I want to help her. I absolutely am going to do what I can to help her. But I'm going to give you the ideas of what I think all of us come together can do for her right now, today, moving forward to help this mother, this normal, everyday, real and true human being overcome the demons and the issues so that she can properly 
mourn and love her lost daughter Zanna, but even more important than that, her other daughter that's still here. But we have to get her right, and she has to get herself right. And that's where our love and our support and our true way of pushing her to better herself and this was my goal when I came into this realm of a channel. This is what it was about. This is what it was about. Using my negative experiences as a criminal and a person that lived life down the wrong highways. I could bring that to the forefront and help you guys better understand. There are still legitimate ways to help these people. But we have to, one push them to want to actually help themselves and then only only financially support in ways that will make sure that's the way she helps herself obviously one we got to knock out the big demon of the addiction that's huge huge an addiction can change somebody's entire being, soul, emotions, thinking, love. Everything about you is changed. And anybody out there that's dealt with an addict or been an addict, you know this to be true. That is what's most important. And then everything else just kind of falls in line behind it. Now, how can we fix the addiction issue that she's dealing with first this is going to come across harsh she's exactly where she needs to be and she needs to be there for a while you got to be locked up to take you out of the lifestyle that's allowing you to constantly chase and chase and chase and that's what leads to the other crimes that are enabling you to be able to get what you're ultimately trying to get which is the narcotic the addiction the gambling and all the trespassing and things of that nature all fall right into the addiction arena and if you could get her help first you gotta leave her in the system Hopefully in a safe, clean environment where they're medically working with her. Away from those that are pushing her to be that version of herself. Now if we can keep them away, she can actually become the other version of herself. The real version, the loving mother that she once was. The real Kara. But they're on top of it. If you or I truly want to help her, here is the steps that we initiate and then we continuously make to help her. One, write her a note or two here or there. Just let her know she has someone that cares. Because when you're in a jail setting like that and you're awaiting all these different things, or even if she gets sentenced to the penitentiary, that mail call, when it's someone legitimately writing you that loves you and cares about you, pushing you to do better, man, that, that's just an amazing feeling when you're locked up to get that. You wait every day for that correspondence. Don't hesitate every once in a while. Put a, a money order of 10 bucks in there or or put 10 bucks on her jailhouse account don't put lots of money on there put a little bit here or there why because that allows her to buy the pencil the paper the stamped envelopes get a ramen noodle every once in a while to eat a soda a drink and she starts feeling the reality of a normal life she could converse back and forth with you by writing you and i guess now maybe they have the tablets and email so maybe allow her to be able to do that by putting a little bit of money. I don't know the whole emailing and all that stuff in the jails. I never did it, so I don't know about it. But I guess now that's what they have. But it's still okay to just write a normal hand, let 
letter and, and let it get to them so that they every day have something to look forward to. And when I say if you want to support her somewhat financially, it's okay to give her a few dollars here or there, but don't allow by over giving us an, an amount to allow that to purchase things within the system that's going to bring her back down. A soda here or there, paper to write with, stamped envelopes, a soup, a candy bar here or there. That's all fine and dandy. You start giving them too much, and now they have buying and purchasing power within the facility they're in. Now you're enabling them to continue in the path that they were already on. There's no change there. Send her a book here or there. Help her work her mind. It's okay to support somebody that's in a situation like this. Just do it the right way. Help them improve themselves. Now, if we begin, and this is something I'm going to be pushing for, I'm going to be talking to the system, and I'm going to really be seeing what I can do. I want to see if we can get her some sort of rehab and counseling and different things like I was able to get at certain points in times. doesn't fully mean that you're going to be released immediately from the system. But you can begin it while you're in there. And if we truly want to help her out, then we, if we're financially able, can put a few dollars straight to that, ensuring that she gets the help that she needs. Because we know it's being funded outside of her actually telling us to trust her that she'll fund it because we're doing it. We're pushing the right direction for that and we could set all that up i'm not asking anybody please know this because of my background and everything too people will think this way so i'm gonna nip it all right now i don't want anything financially to come my direction that i'm gonna make a promise that's gonna go her direction that's not what this is about i'm not doing a fundraiser for kara but i am gonna reach out to see if there's a way that we can get something in place that if you decide to help, you can speak to that counselor, that therapist, that facility yourself and make a judgment on whether it's something you feel as though you would like to help with for her. I want nothing to do with it other than I'm going to be right there standing alongside you to try to help her. It's not going to benefit me. I'm not going to put it in my pocket. It's not going to go in her pocket. We're not. I, I'm not trying to set something up where we send money that just might not get to where it needs to get to or might be used in a manner that's not going to legitimately help her. That was my issue in the past is I knew, I knew we all wanted to help her. Every one of us. I have friends that donated money to her. And it didn't go to the right place. Just didn't. This time we need to make sure. We have to step up. And we have to hold not only ourselves accountable. For doing the right thing in helping somebody. Just like my family had to do with me. They had to look at me and say. We don't know. We're not donating to you. Our hard-earned money is not going to waste because we're going to trust you to do right with it. And then you're going to go do wrong. We're going to be right back at the same spot. You're still going to need the help and you're still going to need the money for it. Let's just nip all that in the butt. Let's set it up and let the financial means go to exactly the person that can help her. Instead of just believing that because we gave a few dollars or our hard-earned money that it was at the end result going to help her. Because we're in the same spot right now, ladies and gentlemen, that we were months ago. Same exact spot. That's painful. Like, I literally had to take days to think about this on whether I even wanted to speak out about it. But I know so many of you care. You want her to get the help. You want her to get it. 
I know you want to be a part of that help. We don't want to knock her down because she's struggling and hurting and going through everything she's doing. That's why I'm not going to speak of the new charges. I don't care. What matters is what can we do from this point forward that will legitimately, one, show her she has a support system that loves and adores her and hopes that we can help her overcome all the tragedy that's happened while improving the next few steps of her future. It's hard. It's very, very hard. I, I've never had an addiction outside of crime and lying and cheating and stealing and God, there was so much. But it wasn't an actual like drinking or narcotic addiction I had. Mine was just a full blown stimulating of the mind addiction. And now today I still live with the remnants of people coming in. And I know they're trolls, but I'll talk about it for a second just for fun that they say I'm manipulating people's minds to follow. Guys, you could come and go off of this channel all you please. You listen to what I have to say because maybe it hits home with you. Maybe it's something that helps you understand what somebody else has said. There's many of reasons why you come here and you listen to what I have to say, and at the end of the day, you make the choice on whether you return to hear my next one, or you just decide at that point it's not worth it. And that's okay. That's what we're supposed to do. I listen to other people because they make me think about things that help me feel as though every day I'm a little more intelligent than I was yesterday. My thinking process is a little bit stronger, more confident. I'm not manipulating you. I ask you just to open your minds and understand that there's a lot of good stuff out there. Many people speak really well, and, and many people that I disagree with on a lot of things still have very valid points and things they say, and that's why I'll still listen to them. I'm not going to knock them down because I disagree with them. I'm going to utilize the bit of the things that they said that helped me improve my thinking, something that hit home with me, and I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to criticize them for it. And I appreciate all of you that don't criticize me for having a different view or a different thought process than many others out there. And when it comes to someone like Kara... I understand, even though we're two different individuals with two different backgrounds, I can still understand the mindset because, guys, I was a criminal too. I saw what she was struggling with, and I saw what she was trying to overcome, and I saw the spinning worlds of it all just not coming together to make that step forward. To be able to heal and overcome. She was stuck. And guess what? She's still here with us today. Even though she is right now detained. It doesn't make her any worse of a person. It's not something that we have to knock her down about. But we have to show her. That her wanting better is worth it at every step that she makes to get better. Not only will improve her life, ladies and gentlemen, but it could legitimately maybe, maybe build a bond between her and her daughter who's still alive today. And wouldn't that be just something that would be considered to be a miracle? Something that 
everybody from afar could maybe get a tear in their eye and an extra beat in their heart with the blood flow to see that reunion and that big hug and that happiness come back to not only Kara, but also her daughter. That's what life's about, ladies and gentlemen. That's the importance of all of this. Not today. Not right now. Not discussing somebody having to go through the system and overcome a probation violation and new charges. That's not what's important. Think about the back of your mind. If you want to help, it's not hard to figure out how. Call up the Spokane, Washington County Jail. Verify everything I'm saying that she's there. And then do a little bit of soul searching to see if you're willing to help her actually get into a rehab facility, a counseling sessions, things that are going to help her every step of the way because I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, our hard-earned money, no matter how much of it we want to put in her hand or her pocket, is not going to better her situation. It's not. Even if she wants to do better, the people she's intertwined with, even though there are some good, it only takes a triplet of the bad ones that are going to manipulate her and take that money from her and never help her overcome the demon. The end result that's already, already, every day ruining her life. And we all, I definitely, ladies and gentlemen, I want to see a good day for her. I do. And I hope I see some good comments on this. And I'll even endure some of the bad ones, I guess. But just know, that's what I'm in it for. I want to see if we can get her some help. I'm going to actually write her a letter and get it sent out on Monday. Just let her know. Even though her and I had our arguments, yeah, her and I have talked, ladies and gentlemen. We, we had our arguments. I'm still here. Still here, and I still care. I'm A.R. Hayes. I'm an ex-con. Tonight, the thoughts actually hurt just a little bit, but I sure hope, I sure hope many of you are willing to help me, help Kara, and just move forward in life. Have a great day.